Welcome to Tech Pub and Mastering jQuery with James Avery and Dave Ward. So coding in JavaScript gets you down. You want to run the other direction? Tired of worrying about how different browsers are going to behave with the script that you write? Is it a pain just to pick out a simple object on your document? Well, you need to see what jQuery is all about. In this episode, we go over the basics, show you why jQuery rocks. The first thing to know about JavaScript is that it is client-side, which means that the code that we're writing is running on the user system in their browser. So it's being executed by Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, or whatever browser they're using. If you're used to working with a primarily server-side technology, then it's a very different frame of mind to know that your code is executing on their machine and not on your servers. The next piece is that it's dynamic. That means that we don't have static types. So unlike C Sharp or VB.net, we aren't declaring that a type will be an integer or a string. It can be any of those things, more similar to Ruby or Python if you've worked with those languages. The last piece is that is that it's a scripting language. What that means is that we can simply add the script to our HTML or other pages and it'll execute in the browser. There's no need to compile it ahead of time. So as a simple example, just kind of dive into jQuery here we're going to add some simple uh, text to a jQuery, to a HTML page and then hide and show that text. Um, I'm not going to use ASP.NET or Ruby on Rails or PHP. I'm just going to use Notepad2, HTML, and get it up and going um, just with the basics. So first I'm going to create a simple HTML document. Um, so I've got my headers where I want to add my JavaScript. So what's the, uh, what's the best way to add jQuery to our document? You can either download it off of jQuery's site and include it like you would any JavaScript include file, or also Google offers uh, a CDN hosting version of it where you can link directly to their copy of it. You don't have to download anything, and it'll come off of their distribution network where it's really fast and um, it has caching benefits. And they encourage you to use that either you know, in production or in testing. It's completely free to use, and it's a good way to get up and running quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in the address to jQuery hosted on Google CDN. So let's dig into the syntax a little bit more. You say the dollar sign is kind of the basic jQuery thing. What is that? What does it mean? It's an object. It's just a shortcut reference to the jQuery object. You can also type the word jQuery there um, instead of the dollar sign anytime you want to and it's completely interchangeable. In fact, if you're using another library that uses the dollar sign, you can you know, use jQuery there instead of the dollar sign and avoid the conflict. Okay, so really it's just a shortcut to the jQuery object. Right. And so then we look and we call it a jQuery. And so what is this text right here? That is uh, typically going to be a selector. Uh, it'll be a CSS3 selector and or some of jQuery's improvements. In this case, document is a sort of a, a special case that it uses to let you specify this, uh, you know, all-encompassing document object that isn't uh, normally a selector. Okay. So we're basically telling jQuery to go find something. Right. If you were to think of it as a, a as a sentence, this is the the subject or or the noun. So basically, we're telling jQuery go get the document, and then the next piece is ready. So this is a shortcut to adding an event? Yeah, to add an event handler. So, and, you know, like I said, the document is sort of specialized. And on that specialized document, uh, there's a, a ready event that jQuery fires when it's, you know, ready. And what we're telling it here is when you fire that event on the document, we want to run this function. Okay. That so now let's, uh, let's figure out how to show and hide our text. Well, first, we need to give those anchored elements IDs. Okay. Because we'll need to be able to, to reference them. And what we're going to be doing here is uh, what's called unobtrusive JavaScript. You know, you may have seen in the past or, or even in the present, uh, you know, on-click right there in the element, you know, on-click JavaScript colon uh, and, and some function. And that's generally frowned upon these days. Uh, you should avoid that if you can because it, it mixes the, the presentation and the behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire up those event handlers from the 
the the alert function or whatever we call it. Okay. So basically, so with un unobtrusive JavaScript, just like any other developing, we're kind of separating our concerns. So we're we're putting our behavior in one area instead of peppering it through our presentation code. Right. It it has the benefit of you know further stratifying your your logic out into manageable pieces. It also keeps your um, your markup semantic. It's good for accessibility, uh, SEO, a variety of things where you don't really want it cluttered with JavaScript. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so now we've got our some text paragraph tag. We've given it an ID of some text. We then we have a mm -hmm. show link um, with a show link ID and a hide link with a hide link ID. And we'll want to use the document dot ready event again. Okay. And we're going to create another function. Yeah. And generally, it's it's easiest to go ahead and use the anonymous function like that. Once you dive into jQuery, you're mostly going to see examples written this way. It's just a convention people follow. And they are functionally identical. Uh, this is just a little bit more concise. OK. All right, so what's the first thing we want to do? Do we want to uh, hire up our hide link first? Otherwise, the you know show link doesn't do a lot. <laughs> Sure. So how do we wire up the hide link? Well, this will be a, a better example of a selector that's, that's not an edge case. Uh, we'll use the jQuery dollar sign again. And then uh, in either single or double quotes, uh, the hash is uh, how you tell it uh, that you want a selector that references an ID. It's the same as in CSS. And then so hide link. And then, yeah, and then close that off. And then we want to add a click handler to it. And, and just like ready, jQuery gives us a shortcut for that, just dot click. And then again, we'll add an anonymous function here as the parameter to that. Right? And then inside that, we'll use another selector with the jQuery dollar sign. And then uh, this selector will be, again, an ID selector, except for some text. And then jQuery, uh, it gives us a variety of manipulation and animation methods without any plugins. And one of them is hide. So just dot hide is a method on anything that you select. OK. So basically what we're doing here is on document ready, we're going to create a function that then goes and finds hide link and adds a function to the click event of hide link that will then hide the some text ID. Right. At first, it seems a little bit uh, nested, but you get used to it, and it's not bad at all. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this. Sure. 